children, I see you. I'm very happy to see you. Greet your family, boogie on down. Give a clap and turn around. My name is Wendy, and I'm going to be teaching you about amphibians, frogs, and toads. So the first thing that I want to do, though, is let's get something straight. Last time we learned about reptiles. Well, we said reptiles are cold-blooded, can we be cold? And remember, we had that big word, vertebrates. That means backbone. Can you find your backbone? They had backbones. So reptiles and amphibians are both cold-blooded, and they have backbones, but there's some differences. Remember, we said reptiles had a hard, scaly, dry skin, and they laid their eggs, let's make a little egg, with a hard kind of protective coating of some sort, typically on land. But amphibians, they have Big word alert, let's all say permeable. That means that water and gas can come through their skin. So I'm gonna show you a nice slimy, green, shiny frog. And that's for two reasons. One, we're gonna find out that they lay their eggs, let's make that egg again, in water, because that's where the tadpoles, I'm gonna be showing you some tadpoles later on here. That's where the tadpoles are going to grow into frogs and toads or toadlets later on. And we breathe mainly for our lungs. Remember, we learned about our rib cage last time. Here's our rib cage on our chest. We breathe through our nose and mouth into our lungs. Well, amphibians do that too, but they breathe mainly through their skin. That, remember we said big word, permeable. So the water and gas needs to go through. So they have to stay in moist environments. And when I show you my toad, you'll see he's in a moist environment. So that's one of the sets of differences. Now let's take another look. They also have different kinds of vision and they have different kinds of feet. So amphibians, they really don't see a lot of different colors. Reptiles see a lot of colors. And amphibians, you're going to see, here's my jumping frog to remind me. Let's see if we can get him to jump. Sometimes he'll jump and sometimes he won't. Doesn't look like he's going to jump this time. We'll try winding him up a little bit more this time and see if I can get him to jump for you. So frogs have long jumping legs, sometimes as long as, I guess he needs to be on a flatter surface. We'll try one more time. Um, twice as long as their body. So if he won't jump, well, you can see his jumping legs. Now, Let's look at a picture of frogs' long jumping legs in a book. But reptiles typically want to run fast, so they have running feet. So just to give an example of how you might confuse an amphibian and a reptile, here I have a salamander. That's the amphibian that has to stay moist and lay eggs in water. And here's our reptile. He likes to bask in the sun. He has a dry, scaly skin. Now, let's learn a little bit about our friends, frogs and toads. They also have some differences. They do have permeable skin, but our frogs generally have mucus like stuff that comes out of your nose sort of slippery I've got some jelly here to stand for slippery there we go um so they tend to have long long jumping legs whereas I'm going to take our toad out 
our toad tends to have a drier, bumpier looking skin, a rougher looking skin, and he's more into crawling, though he still has webbed feet. So I'm gonna get him out. Let's see if he'll cooperate with me better than my, ah, there he is. So let's see where we can show him. Can you see him? There's my toad. Can you see he still has a pretty long leg? There we go. And toads like to hang out, at least by my house. Whoa, there he goes. On rocks. Well, we got to see him jump. Let me catch him. Okay. Oh. There we go, I've got him. Now we got to see some real jumping. So here's my toe. I'm gonna hold on to him a little bit more carefully so you can see his big eyes, though frogs have much bigger eyes. You see how he's puffing underneath there? And his mouth, he's not very happy to be out. So can you see that his skin, there we go again, his skin, I've got to really hold on to him. He's lively. He wasn't as lively in the cage. Is, let's see if we can get him in the picture here. There we go. You can see it's drier and bumpier. I'm going to put him back before he gets all over my porch. So let me wipe my hands off. So toads um, are actually a kind of frog. And they tend to have that drier looking skin. Now, let's learn a little bit about frogs. So here we have some pictures of frogs. They need to live, remember, where it's wet or moist. And they live on all the continents except for Antarctica. And they usually are active at night. Why? Because they're harder to see, right? So let's make our nighttime. Remember that they're usually active at night. And they hang on in groups which have really funny names, knots, colonies, and armies. Can you picture an army of frogs? So there's some frogs hanging out together. So they are social. They are also omnivores. We learned about omnivores when we learned about bears. That means that they like to eat things that are animals and plants. They eat worms, they eat snails. They'll even eat a bird or another frog. So they like to eat lots of different things. Now, have you ever wondered how frogs croak? Can you see that big bubble there? That's called a vocal sac. We don't have a vocal sac, but can you puff up your cheeks and picture that? Now, frogs close their nose. Can you close your nose like this? And then they breathe back and forth. So they close their nose and mouth. Take a big breath, and that's how they make their croaks. I'm going to try to play some croaks on my phone. So let's see if this will work. Here we go. Can you hear that? That is a real grand leopard. Frog. Let's listen to another one. Oh, one of my favorites. So I'm going to go down to the, all the way to the bottom here. And let's see if we can do our, here we go, the barking frog. Doesn't that sound like a dog? That's a barking frog. Let's listen to one more frog. And so that'll sound a little bit different. And I'm going to choose. 
the tree frog. So you can see frogs make a lot of different sounds. They make rinks and bonks. They don't just say rivet, even though that's what we're gonna sing in our song. They make lots of different sounds. Now, so I hear here in my little box of reminders, this is my toy to remind me that frogs croak. Now let's learn about something else. Reptiles, we said, remember, they lay their eggs and then the little babies come out of their eggs. Now we have lots of ways that we grow. For human beings, we start out like a baby and then we become a child and then we grow up to be a grown up. And then we get like me with the gray hair, we get older. But all of these look the same. They all have two arms and two legs and a head. That's not the case for frogs and toads. Frogs and toads and most salamanders, other amphibians, go through something Big word alert, this is a really big brain word. Metamorphosis. They go through metamorphosis. They change. They start out with eggs sort of covered with jelly and then they become tadpoles and then they become tadpoles with back legs and they get front legs. We and then we call them either froglets or toadlets, and then their tail goes away and they become a frog. So let's look at how that goes. We start with the eggs and let's see what we're gonna do next. Here's our tadpole there. And let's get our, whoops, there's our tadpole with legs. So we started, is we got our tadpole, then our tadpole with eggs, legs, and then our frog. So let's get our frog all put together. So we're gonna go from the beginning, eggs, <laughs> there are the eggs. And let's put our tadpole next. Tadpole. And let's get our tadpole with legs. Whoops. There we go. Tadpole with legs. We're gonna see those in a second. And then our frog. So they change the way they look and we call that metamorphosis. So first let's look at our tadpoles and we're gonna see if we can see them. If, and I'm gonna try to get them to move around. There, you can see the tadpoles. If you look carefully, you'll even see they've got tiny legs. Sometimes if I move this, They'll move around a little more. Can you see the tadpoles swimming? Yeah, there are the tadpoles. So we said that, let's see if we can get them a little bit more here. There we go. Can you see, oh, that's a beautiful one. You can even see the legs on that one. So we said that frogs change in ways that we don't, we just sort of get bigger and bigger and bigger. Let's make it bigger and bigger and bigger. But frogs start like an egg and become a tadpole. And then they get two back legs. And then they get four legs because they get the two front legs as well. And then they lose that tail, all gone. 
and then they become a frog. And remember, we can say ribbit, but they might do wrong, or they might do some other sound. So let's be finger frogs. So we're going to be eggs, and we're going to be tadpoles, and we're going to be frogs. And it goes like this. Make your egg. Here is the egg, so slimy and pale. Tadpole grows legs. Let's make our legs. Frog loses its tail, all gone. And we can do a song because we're going to be doing these to remember about how frogs change. The frog lays her eggs. The frog lays her eggs. Hi ho, the dairy. Oh, make your tadpole. The tadpole up oh, hatches out. The tadpole grows back legs. Let's make our back legs. The tadpole tail is gone, all gone. The tadpole's mouth grows bigger, big mouth. And now you have a frog and the frog is jumping. And let's do another song. We really want to remember these different parts of how a frog changes. So we're going to do a song called Watch That Tadpole. Can we see the tadpole up at the top? There he is. So watch the tadpole, watch the tadpole. Lose his tail, lose his tail. Now he has two feet. Now he has four feet. Now frog, now frog. And we're going to do one last one. So I brought my green froggy here because this is going to be about a green froggy. I'm a froggy, froggy, slimy green. So remember, let's be slimy on our skin. Began as a tadpole, as you have seen. I grow some legs. Let's pet our legs. And tail disappears. Let's wiggle our tail. And now I'm a frog. Let's give some cheers. And ribbit, ronk, bonk, chirp, bark, all the different sounds that frogs can make. Now we can play frog hide and seek. So I took my frog pictures and I cut them out. We did a quite an adventure with our toe jumping around, didn't we? So here's all my frog pictures that I cut out. And I can go outside and think, where is a place that a frog might be able to find some moisture? Or where is a place that a toad might want to hide or a salamander? Um, under a rock or um, a leaf where there might be some wa water or moisture hanging out. So we can play frog hide and seek, or you can just hide them around your house. Your mommy and daddy can hide them. There we are. And you can find them. We also can make frog art projects. But before we do that, we want to read a story about frogs. So here's my story and it's called Froggies. And it goes like this. And it goes along with the finger play that we did. Here are the eggs. Can you see the eggs there? So slimy and pale. Oh, tadpoles also. Here are the eggs and tadpoles are slimy and pale too. Look. Tadpoles grow legs. Can you see the legs? 
froggy loses. So the froglet loses his tail. There's our froglet becoming a frog. So let's see what kind of art projects we can do. And I have different ones. First of all, we can cut out some underwater picture and some tadpoles and egg. And we can glue them down. And there we have the different ways that frogs are developing in the water. So we have the eggs, the tadpoles over here, gets more developed, gets the little legs. And we can make a frog life cycle plate. So we can cut out the frog and the tadpole and the one with two legs and the one with four legs and the eggs and put them on a plate to be a frog life cycle plate. So from the eggs to the tadpole and the two legs and the four legs and the frog. But I also like to have a really simple one so we can actually be frog metamorphosis. So I can take some Play-Doh and roll it in to make it there's my group of eggs. Now I'm gonna turn it into a tadpole. So I'm gonna give it a nice long tail. Do you know what that tail is for? That's all the food for the little baby tadpole to grow to become a frog. They don't eat. You probably saw them eating in my water. I'll show you that again. So I can make a tadpole. Then I can decide, oops, I'm gonna give it two back legs. So I can squeeze little back legs out. See, so I'm doing, there they are. I can squeeze little front legs out. Meanwhile, there's my little front legs coming up. The tail's growing shorter and shorter and shorter. And eventually the tail's gonna disappear. And then I'm going to have a frog. So I did some of these in advance so you could see my eggs. Here's my tadpole. Here's my tadpole. Here's a tadpole with back legs. And here is, here's my little froglet. So he's got a little short tail. Remember, he's been using that tail to be his food. Here's his legs. And then he becomes a frog. So there's my frog. So you can actually act out be, remember that big brain word we talked about, metamorphosis. Now, I also made lots of froggy snacks. We'll see if my froggy snacks do better than my toad did. Before I show you my froggy snacks. I'll show you some of the things that I used. So I like to use lots of vegetables. So I had broccoli and zucchini and I had cucumber. I like to use peanut butter to stick things together. I may have to do that in my frog's eyes. These could be frog eggs. These are just little chia seeds and flax seeds to be the eggs. I could have used my avocado to make my frog green or pretzels to make my frog face. Um, but I did use some cookies and rice cakes. Um, I had lots of candies here. I thought, hmm, those might make good eyes. Um, I used some green um, cream cheese and some blue frosting, but I could have used another kind of cheese. I had some licorice to be the eyes. So you can use lots of different things to make your frog treats. 
So before he totally falls apart, I'll show you my first one. So here's my frog. And so I use, see, I, I use a little bit of cucumber and broccoli. And I use some marshmallows and chips. And his long tongue is candy corn. It keeps falling out of his mouth. But we know frogs use those long tongues to catch the insects. So, and I used a pear, oops, there we go, to make my frog body. So that's one kind of frog. Now, but I like to make like different ones. So it gives you lots of different ideas. This is the one where the eyes might be falling off. So this frog is made out of, what do you think that is? A green pepper. So there's my frog. Oops, just lost. Let's see his front leg. There's my frog and I use the stem to be his tongue in that case. That one won't fall out at least. So here's my frog. You can see back legs and front legs and his nice big eyes and he's got that green shiny skin. I use lots of little things. Let's see if I can get this up where you can see it to be parts of frogs. So I used M&Ms and marshmallows and different kinds of chips and candy corn. So one of the things I wanted to do, because we were learning big word, metamorphosis, change. So I wanted to make a frog life cycle. So I used my marshmallow and some of my mini, mini chips to be the eggs. And then I used some of my different size chips to be a tadpole and I added some legs, two legs, four legs, and right at the top, the three green M&Ms are my frogs. So that's to remind us of all the different ways frogs change from eggs to frogs. But I also always like to have a really easy treat, though I'm gonna show you how we can elaborate it. So I used my green cream cheese and a little bit of licorice just to make a frog face because I thought that'd be really easy to do. But if I wanted to, I could add on, so I'm going to get my peanut butter, which is over here. And I can add on some... eye parts and some cheek parts. So, got peanut butter all over my hands. So use this to get it up. So I could add on to my frog if I wanted to. Let's get some chips here. Put some eyeballs inside his eyes. And I can give him some cheek pouches. Remember we talked about those vocal sacs for making the croaks. So I can give him some cheek pouches with M&Ms. And there, so we can make him fancier if we want to. We even can give him some nostrils. That's, remember we said they breathe through their nose and their mouth and they breathe through their lungs, but they mainly breathe through, do you remember why they had to stay wet? Their skin. Okay, so there's a, a fancier frog. Now, we are going to end our unit by doing our goodbye songs. And we will be looking forward to seeing you for more nature lessons. So shake hands with family. It's time to go shake hands with family. It's time to go shake hands with family. It's time to go. We hope we'll see you soon. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, family. Goodbye, children. We'll see you again next month. Now it's time to wave bye-bye, wave bye-bye, wave bye-bye. 
now it's time to wave bye bye we'll see you again next month so let's remember and i'm going to try to catch my toad again see if i can find where he went hopefully he's in there that we learned mainly about how frogs change see if we can get any of my tadpoles to show up there we go can you see them See if we can get them to move around. There you can see a tadpole moving around. And tadpoles change into, there he is, he's on the other side, and I bet he's gonna get away from me again. So I'm gonna hold him tight. Oh, all over my computer, because he was in the water. Okay, so they change, oh, look at him. <laughs> he's not happy with me. So he wants to jump around and explore my porch. So we learned about how eggs turn into tadpoles, turn into froglets and toadlets, and into toads and frogs. And so now be looking at your Hardberger Park and your Hardberger Conservancy websites. Look at the calendar and you will be finding out there's so many exciting things. There's walks and there's all sorts of special programs. So always check your calendar. And next time we are going to be learning about how's the weather because we can feel the weather is changing this time of year. So we're going to learn about how's the weather. So I'll see you again next month where we'll do more big brain learning.